Opening the Road, Victor Hugo Green and His Green Book. Written by Ke Keila V. Dawson and illustrated by Alina Harris. Victor Hugo Green was tired of hearing no. Victor loved the freedom of driving on the open road, but too often the roads were close to him. It was like the, this for most Black people in the United States. When he and his wife Alma traveled from New York to Virginia to visit family, they risked getting turned away, yelled at, and even hurt. Black motors were told, no food, no vacancy, no bathroom for Black people. White Americans travel could stop Travelers could stop at any roadside restaurant, hotel, or restroom. Black Americans had to pack cold food, blankets, and pillows for sleeping in a car, and a make-do toilet. In southern states, Jim Crow's kept laws kept Black and white Americans apart. No drinking from the same water fountain, no walking through the same door, no sitting together, and the separate Black spaces were always second class, if they existed at all. On road trips with nowhere safe to stop and stay, black motorists often drove at night, all night. If they had an accident, ambulances and hospitals refused to help them. If they were lucky, they could find a black funeral director to bring them to a hospital. But there wasn't always a hospital nearby that treated black patients. Up north and out west, black drivers fear getting lost or having car trouble in the wrong town at the wrong time. At sunset, sunset in sundown towns, the sound of a siren or a white man's wave signal, leave now. Even in Victor's old home state of New York, where there were anti-discrimination laws, many restaurants, businesses, schools, and parks did not welcome black people. One day, Victor read a Jewish newspaper with information about Jewish-owned hotels and vacation resorts in New York. He discovered a guide for Jewish people with lists of stores that sold kosher food. In the 1930s, Jewish Americans couldn't go everywhere they wanted to either. This gave Victor an idea. What if he wrote a book with information about where Americans, Black Americans were safe and welcome? So Victor asked his friends and neighbors in Harlem where they safely dined, shopped, and played in the city. Victor worked as a mail carrier. Along his postal route, Victor asked folks about places that were welcoming to Black people, too. After lugging his heavy mail sack in heat, rain, sleet, or snow all day, Victor worked on the book at night. Sometimes he nod off while sorting and compiling his growing lists. Victor finished the Negro Motorist Green Book in 1936. It was a 10-page guide filled with safe spaces and friendly spaces for Black travelers in New York City. The following year, he updated to guide, the guide. Let's all get together and make motoring better, he wrote. With copies in hand, Victor visited black churches and social clubs to persuade New Yorkers to buy his book. It sold like hotcakes. A customer called it a green book and begged Victor to include other states in his guide. So Victor wrote letters asking mail carriers all over the country for the names and addresses of places that welcome black customers. Replies poured in. Victor and Alma worked together to expand the guide. Two years later, the Green Book more than doubled in size to 28 pages. Victor's Green Book, Black Travelers, with Victor's Green Book, Black Travelers knew where to go and who to trust. Hungry? Check the Green Book. Tired? Check the Green Book. Sick? Check the Green Book. To keep the guide current, Victor asks reader for recommendations. He hires sales agents to find Black-owned businesses to add. News about the guy mostly spread by word of mouth. Then, in 1940, Victor happily announced that the U.S. government named it the official Negro Travel Guide. When a national chain of gas stations had started selling the book, Green Book, travelers filled their tanks, were happy to find the helpful guide. The Green Book flew off the shelves. In cities with no hotels willing to rent to Black people, some Black female entrepreneurs rented out rooms in their homes. Tourists showed up at all hours of the day or night on strangers' doorsteps, but with a green book, they knew they were arriving somewhere safe. 
carry your green book with you, Victor urged. You may need it. The green book became more than a travel guide. It also helped readers learn about black achievements and black history. The guide steered families towards cities with thriving black communities. It listed colleges that accepted black students. Even famous blue black singers, musicians, movie stars, and athletes used the green book. More than 2 million copies of the green book were sold. It made possible for black families to enjoy vacations. They went hiking in the mountains, swimming on the seashore, and horseback riding in the countryside at businesses run by black owners. In the 1950s and 60s, black Americans were also marching marching, staging sit-ins, and sitting with white allies on segregated buses and at restaurants. They were building a civil rights movement to protest racial inequality. Victor dreamed of a day when Black citizens wouldn't need the Green Book at all. When we as a race, we will have, will have equal opportunities and privileges in the United States. When some states stop sub separating Black and white travelers on trains, on buses, and in airports, Fewer copies of the Green Book were sold. In 1964, the United States Congress passed a law that made separating people by race illegal. The 1966 and 1967 Green Book was the last edition published. The fight against racism still had and still has a long way to go. But now there was no legal segregation, no legal discrimination, no green book for black people, just like Victor dreamed.